we have a really cool opportunity. This is a, an amazing place in the world geographically, and we have the Port of Seattle, which takes advantage of that, both air and sea stuff. So today, Peter Steinbrook, who's the commissioner or the president of the Seattle Port Commission, is going to present to us, give us an update on port activities. So Peter was born and raised in the Seattle area. Uh, he's got a master's degree in architecture from University of Washington. He was a three-term Seattle City Council member. Um, I'm going to be really brief about this and please dive into this because it's a cool bio. It's in your program, but I'd like to give him as much time as possible. In, 19, or in 2008, Peter founded the Steinbrook Urban Strategies uh, consulting practice, um, offering consulting services to help cities be greener and more functional. Um, he's uh, a Harvard University Loeb Fellow, and he volunteers a huge amount in the community, and I've, there's a whole list here. He's a proud father of two young men, Ben and Mason. Um, I've been really looking forward to this. Our uh, Carrie Kravitz was the one that made this possible. And this actually goes back to my degrees in economic geography. And I studied ocean transportation and air transportation and all those things. So I actually considered headed toward the port uh, back in younger years as a possible career direction. So I'm very much looking forward to what Peter has to share with us today. Please welcome Peter Steinbrook. Well, thank you very much, DJ, for that a warm introduction. I enjoyed the invocation as well as the uh, show and tell. I was thinking of a few things I might share sometime in that regard. Um, and I'm really appreciative of this opportunity today to speak to the Bellevue Rotary Club and your and all your members. I also want to thank Carrie Provitz, who is our government relations specialist for East Side and Bellevue. And I understand that Carrie herself was on the Bellevue Rotary uh, for many, many years. She said going back to the 1980s. So she doesn't look quite that old, but uh, let's uh, give her the credit there uh, for that. Um, and today, I, I think we've got about 20 minutes or so, maybe less for my presentation. And I'll try to give you a kind of a slice across the functions of the port and how we've been managing this year and what we've been doing uh, to support economic recovery and rebound. Uh, so the impacts of COVID, our strategic response, and how we can continue to work together. And I really, really value this regionalism that the Port of Seattle represents um, and our uh, relationship with cities and, and towns all across the county and statewide for that matter, uh, because we are definitely, while we're named Port of Seattle, we're very much regional and statewide in our focus. I want to say just on a personal note, I was elected pa a president of the Port of Seattle this year, not knowing what I was getting into. <laughs> this was just two months or so before the COVID uh, broke out and everything changed. Our world turned upside down at that point. And I was reflecting that when I was on the Seattle City Council back in the old days, things weren't quite as raucous back then. But nevertheless, I was council president uh, during the WTO and the fallout that ensued after that in 2000. I seemed to uh, be in these roles during periods of crisis and challenge. But I welcome that and I take it on head on. With that, let's go to... Uh, the, is, let's see, we're on slide two already here, and this is the platform, the Port of Seattle for a massive amount of economic activity, one of the most diverse ports in the country, since we include both also the maritime side and the airport. And I always want to mention our great Northwest Seaport Alliance, which is a partnership, which I'll be speaking to a little bit later as well. Um, that was a very smart move on the port, part of uh, the Tacoma and Seattle ports about five years ago. The port itself has only about 2,000 employees, but obviously we support hundreds, if not thousands of individual businesses and who are tenants, operators at our port facilities, 
uh, and who they themselves employ tens of thousands. Seattle Tacoma International Airport, of course, is one of the region's largest job sites with more than 300 employers operating on site. And uh, under normal conditions, there's been over 19,000 uh, employees at the uh, SeaTac. We're now calling it SEA, by the way. Um, and so it is truly an important economic driver for not just the region, but the entire state. So the port in everyday life, in your everyday life, it touches everyone. And I hope this conversation will reinforce that, that the port is not just a platform here for the region's economic growth, but we are also part of your daily life. We think of you as customers. I take a very customer-friendly approach, a service approach, and yes, service above self, as the motto of the Rotary is. I embrace that wholeheartedly, but I, I think it's particularly important that in our role uh, that we support our, our customers and tenants and allow them to do what they do best. And that's why we emphasize the customer experience at all of our facilities. We focus on efficiency and productivity in our investments and we're very strategic in our investments as well. Um, and I certainly welcome your thoughts and ideas when we get to the question and answer portion here. So do please let us know in ways that you'd like to see the port go into the future and how we can strengthen those partnerships. And on the topic, we are a special purpose government, as you know, we operate critical infrastructure and facilities of statewide significance that support all of our Washington's most critical industries. Uh, we're funded largely in part through user fees, leases and business revenue not through taxes. In fact, our taxes are, are the, our tax levy is less than 2% of the total countywide uh, tax bite. Uh, and we have hardly changed that over the last 10, 12 years. Uh, we have in intended to increase it slightly to keep up with um, the um, eroding dollar that, it, uh, uh, that has occurred. Uh, but right now it's around 72 dollars per year for the median household. Um, five years ago, you know, we joined forces with the Port of Tacoma uh, and to form the North Northwest Seaport. It's, a, I think, a unique alliance uh, and is a, a form of joint partnership that's pretty much 50-50 down the line in terms of investments and revenue sharing. It's a much better approach when we are confronted with a very challenging discretionary cargo supply chain globally uh, that we, we may maintain this partnership as strong as we can to uh, better able to compete for the West Coast uh, sh share of um, international cargo, as well as the exports that are very important to the state of Washington. Um, we are the fourth largest container port in North America for international shipping. Uh, we have, as one of our most critical issues now, the West Seattle Bridge closure and its potential impacts on our major uh, re uh, modernization of Terminal 5 at Harbor Island. I won't go into that right now, but that's what we're facing right now is a, a, a very uh, uh, important decision uh, on what happens to the bridge and how to get it back online as soon as possible. Um, on re with regards to coronavirus and the port, it's impacted everything we do, obviously. Uh, and it's been a very significant impact. Uh, we've worked to respond in the short term by maintaining our workforce and continuing with our capital projects and working always to improve health and safety of workers and employees and supporting our business lines in the same way. At the airport, just a few statistics to leave you with. Uh, the airport serves about, served about 70% fewer passengers than we did in 2019. The trend is looking better, however, weeks and months this year, we were down 80 to 95% at the worst of it in the number of passengers checked in at TSA. During the summer months, for example, 
we averaged about 70,000 people per passengers per day, which is the equivalent of a super, more or less a Super Bowl every day during uh, May through uh, August, September. And we were down uh, 70% from that. So we're now rebounding to about 20,000 passengers, I think, somewhere between 17, 20,000. But even with the slow return of passengers, we anticipate that the passenger volume uh, for the year will be down about 61%. That's a huge economic impact and challenge for our region. The airport directly supports so many industries from tourism and hospitality to tech industries, to shippers uh, and to ground transportation and aviation. We all feel the ripple effects of this decline in activity. In commercial shipping, and I mentioned our Seaport Alliance, unlike aviation, which grew ex exponentially in the last decade, international maritime shipping went into a crisis already facing headwinds with the trade wars, other challenges uh, that uh, predated the coronavirus. But we started experiencing new competitive pressure, in particular due to the trade war with China. You may know that Canada has a pretty significant competitive advantage uh, at their Prince Rupert and Vancouver ports to uh, moving cargo through their ports and across the country of Canada into the Midwest and the US uh, at a cost of as, as much as $400 per container less. So that's that's our most serious competition right there. And it's due to a number of factors, but they don't have a harbor tax for one thing. And we get nothing back from, or very little back from the federal government in the collection of the harbor taxes. Freight rates are also considerably higher in the US um, than in Canada. So maintaining market share and jobs while dealing with the impact of COVID and the China trade war is a significant challenge and as a result, maritime shipping in August was down about 14% year over year. But there's some good news here. Um, and by the way, I'm sure you all know what a TEU is. It's a 20 foot equivalent measure of the approximate size of a shipping container. They do tend to be 40 feet in length, but that's the measure. And um, so we, we talk in volumes of TEUs. The good news is that in September, the Seaport Alliance had its best month of 2020 and its highest monthly containerized volume since October 2019. So we're seeing a slight rebound. It's well, a significant rebound, but it's not clear that that's gonna be sustained. There was some pent up uh, backup of deliveries and of manufacturing uh, for those imports. And so we're, we're seeing a rebound. So as uh, you may have heard about uh, Port of, uh, Long Beach, one of our big competitors there, has also seen a significant rebound. So our gateway handled about 308,000 TEUs in September. Um, and while down 6.8% year over year, full imports reached their highest monthly volume since September 2019, as companies were restocking and diminishing inventories. So that right now, as of September, Full imports and exports are up 13.6% and 21%, 21.9% respectively. I'd like to now talk about cruise and the canceled sailings. Our cruise ship season should have opened April 1st. Early in the pandemic, we made a commitment that the season would not begin until the public health pan pandemic subsides. We don't know when that will be. There are real jobs and, and an economic in, impact from canceled cruises. Cruise, as you know, creates nearly $900 million in local business revenue for this region and supports 5,500 jobs. The loss of cruise compounds a challenge for our tourist econ tourism economy. Some cruises have resumed in other parts of the world. In fact, there's about 26 cruise ships out there in operation globally right now, out of a total of about 423 ocean going cruise ships. So about 6% of the total are now actively in cruise. 
And there's a controversy going on regarding uh, the return of crews you may have been following in Florida in particular. Um, so with that, we are certainly looking to a rebound next year. We don't expect it will be full. And we also expect that there will be significant new protocols in place at the terminals and on the ships uh, to restore tra uh, passenger confidence in the health and safety of crews. And we certainly hope to see it come back robustly. Uh, I'd like to move on here. Some of the industry shocks here to passenger travel. Uh, this happens to be um, the chart of passenger airport passenger travel shows you how dramatic the downturn was this year compared to the Great Recession and 9-11. Both of those periods took a little time to recover, uh, two to three years, I think, after the 9-11 the uh, disaster hit. And we're far deeper uh, now than we ever were before in terms of the decline. And a recovery is still up in the air as to how, how soon that may happen, uh, but it's likely to take at least a couple of years. Um, so it's a, beyond any crisis we've ever experienced before in our lifetimes, I'm sure you agree. Next slide, please. So what are we doing? That's some of the impacts. The question is, what are we doing about it? The first immediate need is financial relief. We were fortunate that the CARES Act Act provided some significant uh, dollars uh, to help prop up the airport. And during this time, we have not shut down one day of business, either at the seaport or the airport, nor have we had to lay off employees or institute furloughs. But the port has deferred fees and rents and, and uh, cooperated with no evictions uh, adjusted leases and eliminated the airport minimum annual guarantee for airport dining and retail tenants hardest hit by the downturn. We've also worked with local partners to increase support for small businesses and impacted workers. And we donated over 50,000 face coverings to King County hospitals and education focused nonprofits. I'm going to speed this up a little bit as we're running close on time. Capital projects we supported throughout. We support throughout the region. Uh, fairly significant value in capital projects. This is jobs and uh, opportunity there. Uh, we did reduce spending by about 20% and prioritize maintaining our construction funding for resiliency, rebound, and because it is uh, powerful, has a powerfully positive impact on our regional economy. We're one of the largest public sector builders in the region. Our construction projects provide a great boost to the local economy, and we recognize how critical these investments are to people right now, uh, supporting over 1,300 full and part-time workers on average per month in our construction jobs. The commission agreed we should move forward with 20 projects that are already underway worth a value of 1.5 billion. We have about three and a half billion more in the five-year CIP. The projects will significantly improve experience as travelers at the airport and, and improve efficiency of our operations. We're accelerating some projects and we're postponing others. It's, these are some critical strategic decisions that must be made uh, to, to re remain um, fully um, uh, capable of funding these projects. So what's in it for Bellevue and the East Side? Um, well, that's always a good question. Uh, we value this partnership, as I said before, and there are economic development grants that we've made, including $65,000 in economic development grant funds that supported things like the Bell Red Arts District. Uh, we participated in the Startup 425, uh, the Grand Connection Development and Bellwether Arts Festival. Uh, and additionally, we, we award tourist grants through a tourism marketing programs. In the past years, these funds supported Wintergrass Music Festival. In 2020, Visit Bellevue, Washington received uh, on, uh, let's see, received the Tourism Spotlight Advertising Placement at SeaTac Airport. 
In the July 28th meeting of the commission, the port announced a partnership with Washington Tourism Alliance, providing 1.5 million in support for the recovery of this sector, this key sector uh, to our regions and counties economy. We look forward to continuing with the work and partnership with the city of Bellevue and visit Bellevue, Washington through future rounds of grants and partnerships. And please let us know in other ways that we can work together. Fly healthy at SeaTac Airport. So speaking of tourism, you might be thinking about flying somewhere soon. I certainly have, and I have flown uh, a couple of times during the COVID crisis. It's a different experience. On one occasion, I was flying internationally. I had the entire first class suite to myself and a full-time service attendant there, but there was no food or anything to really value, uh, take advantage of. So it has become quite different. We are committed to safely operating our gateways and it's a way to restore confidence in the recovery. We want everyone to know the steps our partners are taking to keep the community safe. And obviously there's no silver bullet to stop the coronavirus. So we've layered in multiple safety measures through our Fly Healthy at Sea program, such as requiring face coverings. And we have 93% participation there, installing plastic barriers, adding touchless technology, much improved sanitation and cleaning, San, hand sanitizers at the, at, at the airport and working with our health leaders and CDC to, best, to get the best possible screening and technology solutions. Over 85% of our dining and retail are now open again at, at the airport, which is a good sign of things moving in a positive direction. We're also exploring feasibility of several testing options in partnership with the airlines at SEA. Equity has been, this has been the year uh, like no other for equity and inclusion and a growing awareness of injustices and systemic racism and inequalities in our communities and nationwide. The port, I will say, is absolutely committed to making our organization more equitable as a source of opportunity as a neighbor and employer. Like many other cities around, we took on led by me an assessment of our Port of Seattle Police Department, not in a reactive way, not to lambast or criticize, they do fantastic work, but to do a full assessment to answer the question, are we doing all we can to maintain and improve policing practices for health and safety and for protection of civil rights and uh, avoidance of some of the things that we've seen in elsewhere in the country fortunately have not occurred here. We're also updating our goals for the century agenda, you may recall, is the port strategic plan, adding equity and organizational performance to our plan. A little bit about the levy I mentioned previously. This is a pie chart showing where your taxes go with the Port of Seattle at 1.2% of the county's taxes. I wish I had another pie chart showing where the money is spent um, but we did cut this year 70 million out of our expenses in response to COVID and declining revenue. Staff is briefing us now through the budget process on strategies to keep expenses down while maintaining investments in essential services, critical infrastructure, and to generate revenue, jobs, and provide a platform for economic recovery. A key point uh, regarding the levy funds, we use them to leverage uh, uh, construction bonds primarily to the tune of $1 to $10 in bond uh, funding. So that, that's a key source for some of our capital projects, particularly infrastructure pro pro projects, our contribution to the Alaska Way Viaduct replacement, uh, the South Sound Gateway project, which is completing the final lengths of the interstate system and connections to our, our airport and Tacoma Seaport. Uh, we also use the funds for reme environmental remediation and workforce development. Right now we have 3.7 billion in capital improvement in our capital improvement plan. And this source of, of funding, as I mentioned, 
regarding uh, to turn turn the levy dollars into bond financing has been critical. Okay, we can move on to the final slide here. Opportunities. Um, we want you to see us as your port, as the county's port, serving the entire state of Washington, and we do want to engage. Coming up uh, later this week on October 22nd, we have a couple of ways you can get involved if you're interested. Uh, later on the 20, 11 a.m. on October 22nd is a Clean Fuels Forum. We expect this year the topic of the low carbon fuels standard will come up again in the legislature and we have uh, vigorously supported that in the past. We also have in uh, that same day at 4 p.m. second in a series of community briefings on our 2021 budget and our C CIP uh, highlighting maritime and capital investment budgets and I've been trying to get the budget process be more transparent uh, with opportunities for public to participate by broadcasting our study sessions and holding these uh, budget town halls, if you will. So with that, I'd like to say thanks for having me here today. I hope this has been uh, uh, informative for you, and I'm happy to take questions if we have time. And by the way, I do do uh, boat uh, uh, carpentry, uh, Cecilia, Cecilia, I think you needed a um, shipwright. I used to do that in my teen and early 20s, uh, working at the Lake Union Dry Dock and Seattle Yacht Club repairing yachts. So that's about it, folks. I'm not Down here a minute. To Oh, good. Okay. Thank you, Peter, for your very informative presentation. We do have a few questions, um, probably more than we can handle right now. If you have a minute or two after our, our program to hang on the line, yeah. if you can do that, um, there may be more. Okay. Uh, first question came up was uh, a statement about tourism being very important to our region and, and the area and to the Port of Seattle. And the question is, how concerned are you about the uh, the events over the last many months, uh, early months with anarchy and response from the city officials and so forth? How does that impact the tourism industry? Sure. Well, that's a really good question. How we don't really know what those impacts will be. Uh, I know that in Seattle, um, that that the uh, hotel vacancy uh, occupancy level is somewhere around twenty percent right now. So it's way down and uh, the lodging industry in particular and restaurants are, are really struggling. And with the added um, challenge of protests and uh, some street violence and other problems, it certainly doesn't help at all. But we just have to keep looking to the future. And we still live in one of the best, great, greatest, best places left on the earth, I think, and particularly in North America our region, and I speak regionally again, uh, where people want to come. And we fully expect that the, uh, that the cruise industry will rebound, one of the robust in the country, uh, the Alaska destination. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes. And we have had to put on hold the development of our third cruise terminal. But we, we know the demand is there. And we know that bookings for next year are robust and beyond just um, getting credit for maybe uh, canceled sailings this year. Uh, so we're looking to the future and we just have to keep doing our best to, you know, to support and promote uh, tourism in this state, which is a great industry. It will recover. Great, thank you. One more question. Uh, this is more uh, related to the airport. Uh, first, a statement. Somebody is saying, thanks for the cell phone lot. That, that's that been a big help. Uh, the second thing was, is, is there any uh, projects that are planned that may help uh, increase the efficiency of drop-off and pickup times at the airport? Is Conrad Lee on the call here? <laughs> Maybe he is. <laughs> I know that's been a pet uh, issue for him. Uh, we, we're, we are interested in developing a shuttle service uh, to expedite uh, travel between the east side Bellevue and the airport. Um, that has not 
remain a high priority right now with the challenges, obviously, of COVID and the downturn in uh, in uh, passenger travel. So, but it's not something we've given up given up on, and I, we think we can perhaps continue to work on that. We need the um, partnership with the major airlines, I should say, as well, uh, because they they have to be supportive of such a service that would pre, pre bag, um, pre-check bags and transfer people to the airport quickly from a re- remote location such as downtown Bellevue. Uh, but again, that's something that has not been taken off the table. And uh, we, we expect we will um, uh, give that another fair shake before long once we get our passenger levels back up where they should be. Great, thank you for that that answer. And again, if you have a minute or two right after the finish of the presentation, yeah. hang on and answer any other questions, I'll, that would be great. I'll stay on the line, yep. Perfect. Um, we wanna let you know that we appreciate your presentation today and wanted to let you know also that a donation in your honor to Harvest Against Hunger, which provides 1,500 pounds of fresh fruits and vegetables to the local food banks uh, has been provided in your honor for oh, your presentation. Oh, thank you so much, that's great. Yeah. Thank, thank yeah. you again. Next week's program is Ken Johnson, uh, who's going to update us on the Climate Pledge Arena. So we'll see what that's about. And thanks to all that helped us put this meeting together today, Jeffrey Van Gogh on the tech side and uh, the production team involved here. So.